And welcome everyone to another uh, hangout with uh, Joe Brinkman and uh, Will Stroll. Uh, Will, good to see you again, sir. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the hangout. Uh, it's it's great to be uh, back to it for another episode in, uh, in this fine March. Yeah, the months seem to be going by so quickly this year. Just. I mean, it seems like just yesterday we were doing another hangout, and then one before that, and you know, so it, it's uh, we've got another another release almost on top of us. So just one right after another, man. These times flying. Uh, yeah, it seems like the older you get, the faster time goes. Because I remember when I was a kid, like a day could not go by fast enough, right? Is it was that an old joke, crack? At yeah. Minutes? Yeah. Because this year hasn't gone by quite as fast for me, Joe. So. <laughs> okay, okay, that's. Fine. So if you got if you're joining us for the first time, uh, this is DNN Hangout where we talk about all things DNN, formerly known as .NET Nuke, uh, arguably the world's best, largest uh, CMS available on the ASP.NET stack. So. Uh, welcome to the show, and uh, if you have any questions for us, feel free to uh, ping us at our respective uh, uh, Twitter handles, at Jay Brickman or at Will Stroll. Uh, you can ask us uh, questions there, or you could also uh, ask us questions on the Hangout page if you happen to be viewing that right now. And so whether you have questions for us, uh, one of the news items we have, or uh, our, our guests that we have, uh, feel free to ping us. Cool. I guess I guess that's my cue for me to to, to keep this going. All right, thanks, Joe. Um, <laughs> so so the the next uh, the next hangouts uh, we generally have one or two planned ahead of time. Uh, April I have not been able to finalize, but I have a couple of leads on that. So April may be taken. But if you're interested in being one of our next guests on the show, uh, feel free to uh, uh, let us know, and uh, you can put it in the comments for any of the shows, or you can email us, or ping us on Twitter, send us. Uh, a uh, private message, whatever it is you want to do, um, and and to that end, even if it, maybe you don't want to be a guest, but you know somebody that should be, go ahead and send us a note. I have no problem with going and talking to that person on your behalf. Um, so with April, we we uh, uh, I have a tentative guest. Uh, May and June uh, and July and beyond are, are definitely open. Um, and in April, we may or may not do a special hangout, uh, maybe from DNNCon. Who knows? Could happen. That that would be cool. Yeah. I think we could we could get behind that. Yeah. All right. So uh, so those are the upcoming hangouts. Um, we as far as uh, upcoming events, uh, we do have DNNCon Baltimore 2016 coming. Actually, you know what? I'm not. I'm skipping. Uh, I'm jumping the shark here a little bit. Uh, before we get to that, let's go ahead and, and introduce the speaker, so that way our wonderful speaker can can contribute to the news as well. And he, there's not just this magical voice coming in and like, oh, hey, who's that? Um, so. Uh, today we have uh, the pleasure of uh, a returning guest who came from uh, who was in our last hangout, and this is uh, David Poindexter. He's the CEO and founder of Envisionative. Uh, so they're based out of uh, basically the Charlotte area in the Carolinas, and uh, they provide DNN services and other media and marketing services to their clients. And so, welcome to the show, David. Thanks, Bill. It is wonderful to be here as always. You guys are good company, and I'm um, looking forward to our talk today. Awesome. So, you came to us because you've been doing some pretty cool things. Um, you know, uh, at one point there was the ODUG that was arguably one of the largest or more popular uh, user groups out there for DNN. Um, and then um, the previous iteration of the user group that you happen to be uh, helping to run right now uh, was uh, uh, very much uh, competing with that, uh, and then I think surpassed it uh, at some point. Um, but then uh, you and, and, and Ryan Moore have uh, basically brought that back. Um, so uh, I, I do want to first thank you for your community contributions, and I'm going to thank you in big ways uh, towards the end of the show because you do have something as in the by the way of community contributions that uh, you want to talk about. Um, so I just want to throw that thank you out there before we get started. So thank you very much. Absolutely. Thank you for mentioning that. We're, we're excited about the uh, positive influx of energy into our user group, and we've got a great core team there and uh, a lot of people contributing to that, so that's really great. Yeah, so so let's back up a minute. So you didn't just jump into this role. I mean, like, you, you came from somewhere. Um, so Envisionative, I think you started something like seven years ago. Um, how does Envisionative come around? 
Yeah, so so Envisionative um, kind of came about, um, you know, like a lot of entrepreneurs. You know, I I, I came out of the corporate world and um, you know was kind of an eclectic career. Um, you know, and at some point, like a lot of entrepreneurs do, they end up asking themselves, uh, "Why am I doing this for somebody else when uh, I could be doing that on my own for for the clients that I want to work with?" So that's kind of how. Envisionative came about, and it just so happened that it coincided with a lot of my earlier work with uh, iBuySpy Portal, and um, and which led to the DNN world. And um, so, it kind of, we we have a both a marketing side of the business as well as a technical, highly technical side of the business as well. So, a lot of the technology uh, based stuff is built on DNN for us. So, we kind of build a business around that. Um, you know, in addition to the agency role. Cool. So that was uh, seven years ago, and you're currently where is Envisionative right now? Uh, we're located in Mooresville, North Carolina, which is just just north of Charlotte, North Carolina. Now I've uh, I've I've been following uh, you guys on on online, and and one of the cool things is uh, watching you move into this new space that we see behind you, and and continually you know kind of upgrade it for the branding. Uh, what, what's that experience been like? It has been wonderful. I mean, we we actually moved into this facility about a year ago, a little over a year ago now, and it's been a little bit of a, a work in progress. We we just kind of happened into this space. Um, it used to be the uh, Visitors Bureau and Convention here for Mooresville, which uh, Mooresville is kind of a thriving little town. You know, it's uh, a lot of transients. Uh, of course, a lot of the race teams are here, and um, you know other large businesses like Lowe's Home Improvement is here uh, based in Mooresville and, and quite a few other large anyways uh, we kind of happened into this space when the Visitors Bureau uh, wanted to get closer to the interstate so it's been a, a, a long process but it's been a nice process of reshaping this place and uh, refacing it to be who we want to be in the image that we want to portray. Cool. Now, when you mentioned, uh, you know, kind of getting involved in the iBuySpy portal days, uh, for those that uh, do not know about iBuySpy portal, what, what would you describe that as to people? Ouch. <laughs> no, but it was it was really an eye opener. You know, the 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 concept of portals and dynamic content on websites, you know, was a, still a fairly new thing. And and Microsoft partnered with another company to develop a, kind of a best practices tools for uh, for developers uh, wanting to enter into that space. And uh, you know, they had iBuy Sporter, but they also had iBuy Store, right? <laughs> and um, I think that uh, uh, back in those days, it was just a lot of ooh and ah. But I remember manipulating that core code way too many times to uh, to get a viable commercial site out. <laughs> it was uh, a lot of fun. We were exchanging a lot of information, a lot of people involved at that point, including Sean Walker, our very very early early <laughs> users of that. So uh, it, it was really great. Yeah, so um, you know, that's kind of dating us a little bit uh, for maybe some of the newer community members, the younger community members, because that, that wasn't seven years ago. That was more like 14 or 13 years ago or something. Yeah. Um, it, interestingly, the original I Buy Spy was right at around 10,000 lines of code, um, and we're a couple more lines of code larger than that now, I think. I think the last number I saw was just over a million lines of code last time I ran the, the numbers on that. So wow. yeah, definitely different from my buy spy at this point. Just a few. Yeah. So I, I think there's been a couple updates since then, and that's a good. All right. Uh, so what was the moment that you found DNN? Do you remember that? Well, um, I would say it came out of that time period, you know, when uh, Sean decided to develop Abbasba Workshop, you know, that was right there in the mix with it at that point, and uh, that eventually turned into .NET Nuke, of course, uh, with the rename, but uh, it was the very beginning. Cool. Um, so I'm going to have to derail this a little bit. I'm, the first question I'm getting is, um, Joe, um, there's some comments uh, uh, they're wondering why your room is so clean. <laughs> Ansel left early. Our creative director left, so I was able to clean up. You know, and uh, uh, that, was for Joe. that was for Joe. You're usually yeah. clean. 
<laughs> yeah, no, usually my room is, is a mess. Um, but uh, actually getting ready to move out to California. Uh, so uh, we're in the, the process of selling the house. Apparently you've got to clean up the place and, and, and get it nice when people are coming to look to buy. Uh, so, uh, but yeah, so uh, only in these digs for, for a little while longer. And, and, and the question is, where's the water tank? It, seems uh, it is in the closet, um, actually. I, I just haven't brought it back out, but it's it's still here in the in the office. Yeah, our, our community is is focusing on all the most <laughs> important things. Um, <laughs> so let's get back to David here. Um, so so you know, finding DNN that long ago, um, you know, with that being that you know kind of early framework, uh, what's kept you with it for this long? Yeah, that's a great question, but it's you know it's a really solid platform and has been so since the very beginning. Um, you know, we, we, I guess it was probably around the uh, um, DN in three days um, when it first came along that uh, things really made a major shift. Um, you know, and for us, it was more of the theming engine or skinning engine that uh, was implemented that really kind of made it super viable for building client websites and so forth. So in an efficient way that wasn't going to be too uh, cost <laughs> um, in flux at that point. So so it was really um, those early foundations that were laid and the continuing of evolving and changing with times. I, I know there's areas we're still behind, right? But uh, for the most part, th th we still have an incredibly solid and modern framework there to build off of. And that, that three years has really been what's kept me. I know that when a client throws a requirement at us, um, we don't have to go, well, I don't know if we can do that or not. You know, uh, there's just such an open um, architecture there for us to be able to do just about anything that the client throws. Yeah, and, and, and although there may be a couple of areas where um, we're behind, uh, I also, you know, think it's important that people recognize that there are some areas where we're still well out in front of what other people are doing, um, you know, and it's always a trade-off as to where people focus feature-wise. Absolutely. So your company envisioned, like, you, you deliver uh, basically a, a website that's complete. Like, the client comes to you, they, they say, you know, we want a new website, and, and this is the stuff it needs to do. And, and then at, at the end of the project, you know, the, the Envisionative delivers them whatever that, that project is. Um, so in, in doing that, when it comes to the DNN, what would you say your, you know, your favorite tools are in your toolbox? When you, when you go to tackle these websites, like, you probably have a few go-to tools. Like, well, what are those things that you use? Um, in the in the terms of like third party extensions and so forth like that, is that what you're thinking, or just uh, in general uh, with the NM? Yeah. So um, for for us, you know, we, we don't handle a ton of super complex things. So um, not to mean that we can't, but most of our clientele is uh, a less sophisticated, I'll just put it that way. So so the needs there a lot of times are um, very simple as far as the content management system goes. So a lot of the base things right out of the box is absolutely wonderful. And then as far as third party goes, you know, we absolutely have a few extensions that, you know, we've just, we just noticed that they're, they have staying power. And there's a nice response uh, from you know from a support standpoint, and we absolutely go to those. So some of the common features like blogging and um, the galleries and those type of things, uh, forms, uh, those things. So yeah, absolutely. Whoops, I was muted. That happens. See, every now and then I follow my own rules, and it catches me. <laughs> Um, now, when uh, you, you at some point uh, discovered the the Charlotte, uh, what used to be called the the, the Queen City User Group, right? Um, so, what what led you to that to that point? 
Well, um, actually, me and Alan Foster started that way back in the day, and um, Alan took the helm of it, but I was there in a support role from the very beginning, and it was us that decided to actually start that in the beginning. We, we knew of quite a few people in our area that were in companies in our area that were utilizing uh, DNN to build websites and so forth, so it just seemed like the right thing to do to try to pull some of those people together to collaborate. And, and, and what was that experience like when, when you guys were putting the user group together? Um, you know, can you describe some of the, like, the early process, like conversations maybe, like this, just, just that early, you know, kind of the chicken or the egg part? Yeah, uh, you know, neither one of us really had that much experience when it came to running user groups. It was, it was relatively a new idea for us, even though we had attended many, we didn't have the first inkling about how to how to run one. So um, I, I wish I could say there was a wonderful process in place, you know. Um, but had we had some of your blog writings way back then, it would have been wonderful, right? <laughs> on on user groups and so forth. But a lot of it was through trial and error. So we we, we took a real laid back kind of approach at the beginning, um, but yet made it important when people showed up, you know, like we took it seriously. Um, but yet it was nice casual environment uh, um, as far as uh, the community aspect of it, the social aspect of it. All right. All right so I don't want to step, I know you have some uh, presentation on some, some of this, so, you know, if, if any of this I'm stepping on your presentation at all, just, you know, feel free to say say so and, and we'll let that be where it should be organically. Um, now, uh, you know, since then you've, uh, well actually, so let's, let's get back to Envisionative a little bit. So when, when you talk about your clients, like, like when, when Envisionative is, is looking for its next client, what kind of client is that? Uh, who, who do you look for? Yeah, so what we, where we try to start at is really with the idea. Um, we like to think of ourselves as an idea company. Um, our tag is we have your next great idea. Um, so a, a lot of times that comes from a marketing angle. Um, sometimes it comes from a technical um, perspective as well, but uh, most of the time it's more of a marketing drive behind that where a client has a vision for something, but they don't really know how they're going to get there. They may have some preconceived ideas of how they could do it, but uh, more times than not, they need some guidance in that area. So uh, a lot of times it starts with us with an idea um, for them to be able to to have legs and grow and, you know, get to that end vision that they have. So, you know, starting with the idea and then putting the design around that idea and then building a strategy around all of that. So it's really more about the ideation, the branding, and then the strategy. Um, and involved in all that, of course, there is that small sliver that's a website. And um, that's, that's how we leverage DNN there. All right. Uh, so uh, maybe one or two more questions before we move on to the news segment. But uh, 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 I'm not sure if this is a new viewer or not it's because I, I often forget to check this page. But uh, somebody named uh, Yodi Collins says hi to everybody. So good afternoon, folks. So good afternoon to Yodi. Thank you for your comment. Um, the uh, as, so when we talk about oh, man, I just got uh, sidetracked with that. Um, <laughs> when oh yeah, now I know. All right. So sidetrack so you became. <laughs> So when we talk about uh, you know like your involvement with uh, DNN, uh, you know, uh, wh when you get involved in a, in a client project, for you personally, what's your favorite part of your participation? It's probably the business analysis side of things. You know, really listening to what what the client needs, and you know, it's kind of like working with a clean. Uh, you know, uh, canvas there when you're an artist, you know, you've, you, you've got that and you've got an idea of what you want, but you don't really know how it's going to come out. So it's, it's really putting the pieces together, connecting the dots. And um, sometimes it, it, it's a complex technical solution, right? So, you know, sometimes we have to think inside the box and sometimes outside of the box um, to be able to achieve that. And then at the, main, at the same time, balancing the client expectations and, and you know, making sure that their needs really are met and we're not getting off into geeko land, you know. So I really enjoy the process of analyzing the business needs and, and architecting a solution around that. Did it, did, did it always, like, was it always that way, or is that something that you discovered that you like to do? I, I think it's probably always been that way. Uh, you may not know, but I have a, my 
my schooling is in electrical engineering. I have a bachelor's in electrical engineering and then went later on and got a master's in business. But um, I, that engineering mindset really kind of plays, you know, they, they, they call me the geeky O here, uh, you know, because that's, that's really the hat that I wear uh, when it comes to things. I'm the, I'm the one that sees the holes or sees the opportunities technically. So um, we'll, we'll let the marketing and designers and illustrators, you know, dream up everything, and it's kind of the engineer architect fun here. So we make sure that we're talking to one another. <laughs> I'm uh I'm getting some uh, pressure offline here from uh, from some folks. So they really want to know what the huge announcement is, um, and you'll find out soon. Um, so uh, not even Joe knows actually about this, yeah. this announcement. Yeah, this this announcement. Like, how many people in the world would you say know that this is a thing that you're gonna talk about later? That that's interesting. I, I don't know what you're talking about really, but <laughs> no, I'm just speaking. Um, actually, Will, you are the only one that knows. So um, that has been very interesting dynamic, right? To uh, to keep something under hat for this long. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Really yeah. excited. Especially for me, like I have this a uh, small circle of people that I, I constantly keep updated with, and and like th there's been a couple times even recently where they're like, oh, I'm having this issue, and like. It, it's been it's taken all of my willpower to to not tell them it's about to be solved. <laughs> um, <laughs> Absolutely. So uh, the uh, let's move into the news and uh, oh jeez, getting some uh, peanut factory comments now. All right, let's move into the news. <laughs> yeah, I know people have things to do, but I promise you, it'll be worth the wait. <laughs> yeah, just just ignore all those comments from Clint, Will, and, and, and we can move on. Yeah, right? <laughs> Somebody wants attention. <laughs> um, the, uh, so uh, that's uh, good. So we normally have, well, we'll start with a DNN platform update. So, Joe, where, where, uh, where are we at with uh, DNN version 10, 11, 12, 13? Where are we at? So we are just getting ready to lock down uh, 801. Uh, so... Primarily, that is bug fixes. There's a few minor enhancements to some of the MVC stuff and, and really just clean up from the, the 8.0 release. Uh, our, our next feature release, uh, or our next big release, won't come until this summer. Uh, even there, it's, it's probably not going to have a lot of big features in it uh, uh, just yet, um, and probably the fall will be before we have our next, next really big uh, feature release. Are, are there any, uh, like, for the feature release, are there any, like, you know, good tidbits or anything that we uh, can tell the, tell the audience? Uh, primarily, it's just going to be more enhancements of the stuff we started in 8.0. Um, we're really, this year is, is primarily about stabilizing uh, everything that we've done, uh, doing some minor enhancements. We're looking at some of the stuff that we had to cut out of 8.0 as to whether or not we can, we can slip that back in. Um, but uh, that's still uh, we're still going back and forth on on what we can do and when we can deliver those things. So uh, a little early yet to be able to to say for sure what's going to be what's going to be in that next uh, big 8.1 release. But 8.01 is uh, in the next uh, couple of weeks. I think actually we're we're in regression right now, doing the last bit of testing on that. So I expect to see that. Uh, out here in the next two weeks. All right. Um, with the uh, in regards to contributions, so it sounds like eight zero one is is uh, code frozen at this point, right? Um, yeah. So pretty much done. So if somebody wants to, so if somebody still has updates and they want to contribute, and, and they're a developer and, and they want to uh, uh, submit a pull request, uh, what branch are we working on from right now? Is it still development? Uh, it should be development. It's it's always development uh, for community pull requests. Uh, and we'll we'll make sure it gets merged over if it needs to go over in the 801 or in some other branch. Uh, but for community purposes, you should always pull uh, do pull requests against development branch. All right, cool. Um, let's see here. So we got some events coming up. So we got DNN Con Baltimore uh, 2016. It's coming up very fast on April 1st and 2nd. Um, there's still time to get into the the event. 
Um, so on the first will be, uh, which is a Friday, it's going to be a paid training event. So if you would like to get some professional training on, on especially some of the newer techniques, uh, uh, there's some uh, great trainers that are going to be providing that. Uh, so you can go to dnncon.com, and we'll put that in the show notes, and you can register. Uh, the, the, the day following that is a Saturday, and that's the free conference. So that's a free conference all day long. You get to learn about all kinds of things, DNN. There's several tracks. There's a, a, a lot of new speakers even uh, and, and new content that, that is, is really exciting for me. Um, you know, I, like, sometimes I feel like I, I've heard the same thing over and over again. It's just in a, in a, in a new perspective, but, but that's just not the case this time. There's a lot of really good uh, new content and, and surprisingly a lot of new speakers that I, I don't even know who they are, and, and, and I love that. Um, and some of the other exciting things is, is that some of the door prizes. Um, so um, that we, we have a raffle at the end like we always do, um, and, and there's some exciting things that you could possibly win, um, and we're really excited about that. And, and, and everybody's going to get a raffle ticket walking through the door, but uh, we have a, a challenge out there right now. Um, and, and, and David, you're actually uh, helping run that event, and so what, what's that social challenge we have right now to get an additional raffle ticket? Yeah, so right now, anyone who blogs about their three top reasons why you can't miss DNN Con will get an extra raffle ticket at the door. And, and what could they possibly win? Oh, my. Um, will things that fly, um, things that you can just be oohed and odd with the visuals. Um, man, it, it's some good stuff. Good stuff. <laughs> So with the uh, so there are some like some uh, bigger door prizes than what we normally uh, have seen in the last few years. Uh, so that's something you definitely don't want to miss. And, and there's also a, a few uh, um, networking events that are part of it as well. And and that's really the part that I love the most. Uh, you know, I I, I love uh, getting a lot of, a lot of this content myself. But but that one-on-one -on -one interaction I get with uh, in in those uh, network settings. Uh, you know, for like the the welcome reception and the DNN after dark party. That's always uh, been you know a fan favorite. Um, uh, th those are, are also still on as well. So uh, you get a lot of networking, a lot of information, a lot of contacts, a lot of business is going to be made there. Uh, and then we also have DNN Connect 2016. So uh, that's from June 2nd through the 5th. And I believe the early bird for that is over. That, that conference is not free. Um, and, and so uh, I think the early bird for that is over, and they, they, they're filling up their seats for that one fast. Um, so both events, they're, they're uh, you know, the registration is still open, uh, but you want to reserve your spot fast, and especially with Baltimore. Uh, you know, if you want to stay in the same hotel as the event and as everybody else, you want to get there and register and, and book your hotel immediately. And actually, I'm I'm very, very uh, ashamed to admit this. I keep forgetting to do that myself. So I'm going to do that after after the hangout. Yeah, uh, I'll I'll be joining you there, Will. I still haven't booked my travel yet, so that's got to go in today for sure. All right, All right, you guys, get on it. Uh, I will mention, too, you mentioned that it's not free conference, but uh, the fee that you do pay covers your lodging and food for the duration of the conference. So that is a wonderful little tidbit there about that. And, yeah. and your membership uh, as part of uh, DNN Connect organization. So the, the membership is covered in that as well. Yeah, so like it's basically all you can eat, all you can drink type of thing, and and you know you have a place to lay your head, and and you can just hang out the entire time. So the entire time is that you know having gone to one of these myself, the entire time is a networking event, uh, even though you're having content and whatnot. Um, they they do a very good job with that event as well. Uh, the the but but David, you are actually not going directly to the event, huh? Right? You you might have a I think you have might have a different itinerary. Yeah, I'm planning on flying into Geneva and taking a road trip uh, down through southern France to get to Spain. So looking really forward to that, and it's with some fellow community members, and uh, looking forward to a really good time. Awesome. And and just to be clear for some of the people out there, um, uh, if, if you're going to blog and you, and you want credit for a, a raffle ticket, um, it's got to be more than, you know, one it's great. Two, it's really cool. Three, uh, this one session, like, like, put a put a few sentences in there, maybe. <laughs> hey, uh, well, I've got one even better than that. Our good friend Gifford Watkins uh, posted in the uh, one of the social channels. One A, two C, three K. Ack, nice. <laughs> you can always count on uh, on Gif. 
<laughs> nice. Um, so some of the blogs. Uh, so I there's a, there's a number of uh, good blogs and extensions out there that were uh, mentioned, and, and we're not going to go through all of them. Um, but uh, the first thing that was uh, that I wanted to definitely talk about was um, uh, Daniel Mettler has a blog out there about debugging JavaScript errors with a modern browser and F12, and it's a pretty good uh, walkthrough to kind of get you if you're a developer. Uh, to get you to understand, you know, a, a, a way to debug issues that might be happening with client-side code, uh, and and so that's a really good one to to look at if you if you're not familiar with that process or, or how to do that, you've never done it before. Um, but but as a developer, like if you're one of the things that that uh, um, I, I don't want, you know, I want to maybe put out there as a potential best practice is if, if you are a developer releasing a a module or any application for that matter, and and uh, you are there, there are errors that are occurring. That shouldn't be the only possible way that somebody can get to that error necessarily. Um, one of the, like like one of the things that, that that irks me is is like if I have to support that for a client, that they have no idea how to do that, and you're not going to teach a client how to do that, and, and they're never going to report that client side script error. Uh, so like like what are your feelings on like how the best ways are to report errors uh, for the for the you know if you're building a product? Anybody, you can jump in there. Crickets. <laughs> <laughs> Are you talking about the event log? Or event the log. Like that's one way to do it. Yeah. Yeah. If you're, you know, if you're doing um, some some other type of application, you know, a console app or something like that, obviously writing out your errors there as well, or logging them to a file would be great. Yep. So the, the next uh, item here is uh, Chris Hammond uh, had yet another release of his Visual Studio 2015 templates for DNN, uh, now with Wizard for customizing. Um, so it's very good English in the title. And, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but he's done something really cool there where you can add some uh, additional information and, and further customize the template. So that's very cool to see. I know uh, uh, there's quite a few people in the past who have... Uh, uh, had the goal of doing something like that. It just uh, never made it out uh, out there, and so uh, that's uh, something to check out. Uh, let's see here. Uh, oh, this is a really good article. Uh, Bruce Chapman um, at a little bit, like, maybe a little bit of nudging uh, from some people in the MVP group, um, but uh, he put out a really cool blog post about using cloud storage for your DNN images, users, and other folders. And so uh, it's kind of walking you through how you can make the, uh, the default portals folders uh, be connected to the cloud and not necessarily hosted directly on the server. Um, and so that's a really cool one. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Joe Brinkman, you posted a, a nice article here about community blog guidelines. That's, that's, a, that's something that was in there. We, like there was a time where when you got added to the blog as a contributor, um, that you would actually have to be told to go look at that first, and then you would say that I looked at that. Like, like, but we have it back as a blog post. So, like, you want to give some uh, some color around the community blog guidelines? Yeah, I think sometimes uh, we all forget that that this is a shared resource, and we just wanted to sort of remind people about uh, about the fact that this is something that's for community, and we want to make sure that it's adding value. You know, so we. We want to be careful about the type of content that it's not just advertising. Uh, that if you're doing if you're doing uh, comments, that they're comments that are adding value to to the rest of the community. You know, a bunch of comments that are just like, oh, plus one, plus one, me too. Uh, that's awesome. You know, there's not a lot of value in those, and so we want to try to keep those to a minimum. Um, you know, and and get some some more high quality content in there, if you will. Um, so Joe, if, if uh, another community member wants to be part of the community blog, what do they have to do? Like, like is that something that's open to the community? Uh, it is, for the most part, it's moderated. In other words, uh, just send me an email uh, and I will, uh, I will get people uh, uh, into the blogging role. Um, generally, we, we limit that to MVPs or people who've been around the community for a while who have a reputation. In other words, if it's your first day in the community, I'm not going to give you access to, to start blogging. But if you've been around the community for a while and you've got a reputation in the community, uh, I don't have a problem opening that up. 
Awesome. Uh, there's some other good blog, uh, blog articles out here, like some announcements for the last few Hangouts, um, uh, the announcements for the module, uh, DNN8 module contest uh, winners, so congratulations to you guys. I'm going to be putting all of those extensions into uh, the show notes as well, so everybody can uh, that's looking at the Hangout, uh, uh, on, on the Hangout announcement can easily get to those. Uh, let's see here. Um, and another one, uh, so this is another... Another one from Daniel Mettler, but uh, th this is really interesting. I, I don't know much about either of these things, and so I was, I was like curious as for your guys' feedback. Is is there's three reasons why they're moving from grunt to gulp, um, and and I I'm, I'm ashamed to say I don't know anything about either of them. Like like, what's your guys' opinion on grunt and gulp? So I've used both of them, um, and currently uh, I'm definitely with Daniel. I I find gulp to be uh, a little bit more intuitive in some respects. Grunt tends to be a lot of configuration more uh, you're kinda like writing code but writing code is JSON um, so it's a little bit different um, you know it's kinda like if you've written if you've written uh, MS Build or Ant scripts um, you know it's not at first blush it doesn't seem like a language even though it is um, and and grunt can be that way a little bit. It's still JavaScript, but there's there's some aspects to it that are more configuration oriented, if you will. Um, Gulp is is much more of a you know here's some uh, functions, and so it's much more straightforward. Much more if you've written JavaScript, I think Gulp feels more natural. Uh, and Gulp also does. Um, does uh, basically, I want to say, parallelized or or multi-threaded, uh, asynchronous, uh, stream-based uh, um, is actually what I'm looking for. So it does more stream-based uh, execution. So you can actually pass data from one function to the next as as part of continuous stream. Cool. Um, you have anything on that, David, uh, or are you, are you like me? You just haven't tried them yet. I, you know, I have dabbled, but not enough to speak intelligently or about any of it. So, it's... all right, I'm with you. Uh, well, except for the dabbling. <laughs> so... <laughs> they're they're mostly they're mostly used on uh, when you're doing heavy client side work. So, the more JavaScript work you do, or the more stuff you're playing around with CSS and and wanting to do minification and bundling and stuff uh, at build time. Uh, that's where you start running into more of this stuff is when you're trying to, you know, compress images or uh, bundle CSS or do minification on JavaScript, do linting uh, on your JavaScript or on your CSS, you know, those, type, those sorts of tasks. But they're basically just task runners. Task runners, okay. Um, so uh, moving forward, uh, we got... Uh, a, a, so. There was, a, there was, of course, going to be a lot of extensions released over this past month with the DNN8 module contest, um, but there was a lot of extensions released over this past month, and so I'm not going to go through all of them, but I'll put them all in the show notes, uh, at least the ones I noticed. Um, but, uh, you know, some of the notable notable ones is open content by Sasha. Uh, uh, I don't know how to say Sasha's last name, but uh, but uh, that's what, like, I'm a very big fan of open content and, and open, um, uh, open forms. Uh, those are a couple of my favorite open source extensions. Uh, let's see here. Uh, there's also Dean and Chat by Chris Hammond had another release. Um, you know, Too Sexy had another release. Uh, let's see here. Uh, in R7 Documents, never tried that. Uh, another co uh, community participant, uh, um, Roman Yagodin, I, I think. Uh, and he also did a, a, a Russian language pack, so that's pretty cool. Um, so we'll put those, uh, the rest of those in the show notes as well. Um, but what I'd like to do is get to David's presentation. And so this is going to be interactive, uh, Joe. So, you know, like yeah. you, me, the rest of the community, any questions at all, uh, David's eager to get your questions and comments and, and feedback, unless your name's Clint Patterson. So, uh, <laughs> and, and we're hating on Clint a little bit just because we love to. Clint's a really nice guy if you don't know who we're talking about. And he's also our keynote speaker for uh, uh, the DNN Con event uh, coming in, in April. So, uh, David, the show's yours, man. Excellent. Well, thank you so much um, for the opportunity to present here today. And this is, uh, like I said, uh, let's let this be nice and interactive through here. Um, uh, we've got 
a little bit less time than I planned for, but uh, we'll roll through some of these pretty quickly. So um, I guess you guys can see the screen okay? So I'll be offering to you today a Southern Fried Buffet of DNA goodness. So, you know, we, uh, we the, playing off a little bit of our user group here, um, but uh, we, the, it's an exciting time. Um, to, to be in the DNA community and what I want to do today is really kind of infuse a little bit of excitement, a little bit of positive energy into the community and um, you know really try to help you find your place in the community. Um, you don't have to be a hardcore developer to be in this community and be actively involved so um, that's one of the things that will be coming to light. So um, let's get right into it. Um, we've gone over a little bit about who I am and uh, where I've come from and what I'm currently doing, but um, if you need to reach me, I will point out the contact information there. Uh, you can reach me on Twitter at David Poindexter or at Envisionative. So we've got the DNN community, and I, I, I pulled this off of uh, the DNN website um, earlier today, and um, it, it was great because it had been a while since I had seen this. And, you know, it, it, perhaps you're new to the DNN community and you're wondering, okay, what is this thing we're talking about community here? Um, for many of you that haven't been around for a long time, it, it, DNN, that was one of the real attractors uh, in the early days is that everybody was excited about it everybody was offering help to other people um, you know and it, it they kind of encapsulated this um, on, on the website you know it is fun it's a great software platform and there are great people in the community some of them maybe are just lingering out there a little bit now um, maybe less involved now but if that's you I do encourage you to get involved and I absolutely love this uh, quote from uh, Scott Wilhite um, that said it's a good day to be a DNNer. So why is it a good day to be a DNN, DNNer? Um, it, you know, there's a technical answer to that question and there is uh, a, probably a million other answers that you could come up with, but uh, you know, just with the onset of DNN8 alone is enough to infuse new energy, um, especially if you're a developer in this community. You know, now we have the capability of, you know, all these people that are doing front-end applications out there, spas, and um, people that are in the MVC world. Um, great time for them to, you know, rediscover uh, a great platform here in DNN uh, because with those capabilities of building extensions um, in those um, in those patterns of development is there now, so it's a it's a really great thing. You know the the speaking of those, the the thing I really like about that, David, is that uh, you don't have to give up everything that you already love about DNN to be able to develop an MVC or to develop uh, in JavaScript and and more of a spa approach, and that they integrate so nicely in with everything else that you're doing in DNN. You know, and, and that's not true about all the other frameworks out there. Often when they make this transition, it's like all MVC or all of the old way. And, and with DNN8, we were able to sort of keep the things people liked about the old stuff and still give you the new, the new frameworks, MVC and SPA as well. Absolutely. And I'll add to that that, you know, in the early days, the learning curve to, for instance, if you wanted to develop a custom module, it was quite a bit more steep than it is now, and that is really exciting. Um, you know, especially with the templates that are available now, uh, the DNN packager that's available um, that uh, Daryl Tunnel has put out. You know, there's there's different ways um, to now get involved in DNN development, and I believe the learning curve is a lot less. So that is that is an exciting uh, thing as well for for this time that we're in right now. So um, let's move into some of the different areas. You know, I, I, maybe you are aware of all these different ways that you can be involved in the DNN community. Um, but if not, maybe, uh, you know, so some of this will uh, spark a, um, so, you know, a fire under you to, to maybe get involved in that area because you may not realize how many areas. And I'm really only going to scrape the surface 
of this, but um, you know, first of all, let's talk about the community exchange here. Um, you know, the community exchange came came along um, not too long ago, um, and it was kind of a, a new way, a more modern way, probably, of question and answers type uh, format that uh, kind of moved us beyond the the more traditional route of the forms, which we'll talk about a little bit later. But you know, the community exchange is that you've got a question about something, be it technical or otherwise, as it relates to DNN. This is a place to go, and there are people that are. Um, for lack of a better term, trolling this area and looking to help people. Um, remember, we said that this is a community full of great people and people that are willing to help. And, you know, it's free. <laughs> um, well, as you see here, there's no payment required to get that information. Now, you might have to wait a day. You might have to wait two days, but um, a lot of times you don't. Uh, usually somebody will respond pretty quickly. So, so I just want to clarify something. Since most of our folks are all remote from each other, you know, across the world, we don't mean trolling like trolling, trolling. We mean like trolling, <laughs> like trolls. You know, they're they're looking for for questions to answer. They're not trolling you. That's one of the things I love about the community uh, that we have is, and why I why why I stuck with it when I found it originally was was the community is is there weren't trolls. <laughs> Thank you very much, Will. <laughs> That's a good point. So. Uh, uh, the, the nice thing about community ex exchange, too, is, is the format is a little bit different, right? It's about someone who's directly wanting a specific answer for something or the, the best answer that you can get for a specific question. It's not just a place to go and discuss and chat, right? It's, it's you know, I have a problem and I need it solved kind of thing. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's less of a, a thread of discussion than it is just finding an answer specific um, that you're looking for. You know, and, and if you don't have a question, it's okay. If you're looking for an answer, you may actually find that somebody's already asked a question, if not the same as what you're asking. Uh, it could be very similar, and it could lead you down the right path. So this is a great resource. As you see, there's over 6,000 questions in the system right now, so that's uh, – a lot of information there to glean off of. So I'll move uh, move on to the next. You know, we we touched earlier on a couple of events that are coming up. Um, you know, especially if you're new to the community, these are great. Um, you know, and if you're old timers in the community as well, that you know that, that Will mentioned earlier, the one of the greatest things about these events that you go to is the networking aspect. You know, a, a lot of us especially in the early days, we kind of work in a closet, you know, by ourselves, kind of in a, you know, as a hermit or something. And, you know, we, we may go out and look at a few forms and try to get answers and things and, you know, try to struggle way through it. But, you know, these relationships that you can build at these events and, you know, most of them are free, you know, and the ones that aren't free are very low expense um, as, as far as uh, that goes. So, you know, there's really no great reason not to, to go to these events, and you know, one more plug for anybody that blogs. There are three reasons why you can't, you know, you, you don't want to go, you know, that you need to go to a to a DNN con. Uh, please do blog about that and get an extra raffle ticket. You may be flying something home. <laughs> so uh, next, we've got the community voice. Um, this is this is um, a great way to share your ideas. Maybe you've been working uh, in with DNN for a while and, and you see some areas that uh, things could improve or that uh, need to work a little differently, this is a great way to voice those ideas. And as community members, you'll see here the first first couple that are listed there, you know, one's listed as under review, and it had 55 votes in it. So it's a nice little voting mechanism to where, you know, sometimes we think our idea is the greatest in the world, but then when it is uh, put up against our peers, you know, they, they can kind of see things that we may not see being so close to the idea. Um, so this is a great platform to share those ideas and get some feedback on those in the form of voting. and you know, like that second one uh, that's listed there, reduce module markup. Well, it's been accepted. So, you know, the idea has been heard, it's been voted on, and it's been accepted. Now we're looking at a, a, a nice change to the platform because of that idea that came about. So, really great. 
And, and just for everybody to know, like, like he's putting up all these slides. We'll make sure the links to these areas are, are in the show notes as well so you don't have to go searching for them. Yeah, that's great, Will. Thanks. So, you know, this is probably one of the oldest yet richest areas for finding answers to questions as well as asking questions that need more involved conversation, you know, a little more complicated than like in the community exchange where you're, you're trying to get an answer to a specific question. This may be more generalized, you know, where you're having a certain recurring uh, challenge when you're, you know, building a module or you're installing DNN in a certain environment and you, you see some behavior that you weren't expecting. This is a great place to, you know, find answers but also to have dialogue with other community members and you'll see when you get in there that there are a lot of people that are still extremely active in this in this uh, section here. So, um, I, Joe, I don't know how many posts there are out there and if that's easy to, to really tell, but I know right here just off of this you can see that there are, you know, in the installing DNM platform alone, there are over 14,000 threads. So you can imagine um, those are real expansive, you know, set of resources there for, for you to contribute to and to learn. Um, I, I will mention this too. Um, maybe you are uh, hesitant to engage in uh, community forums or some of these some of these things that we're putting forth because you may feel like you have some deficiencies and don't really have answers. Um, I, I would like to encourage you to um, really go out there and in the good sense troll these and look for ones that you actually don't know the answer to. Maybe go and spend some time trying to find the answer to it. Um, somebody else may beat you to the answer but you know the great thing that you have accomplished there is you've learned something in the process by trying to help somebody out and um, that that really was the basis from the very beginning of the DNN community and you know we that that I'm sure Will you could probably attest to that and Joe yourself you know attest to the benefits of that and um, the need for really engaging in the forms not only as a consumer of it but also a contributor yeah, I, I, to me, that's one of the ways that almost anyone can get started in communities. Uh, it's the way I got started in, in DNN. You know, I started by reading the forum posts, and at first I wasn't even answering anything. I was just reading, right? And then before long I started asking questions, and then not long after that I started, or started answering questions, right? And, most people are the same way. You start by reading and then asking and then answering. Um, and so I would encourage people to, to jump in and just start following along. Absolutely. Well, I'm going to try to roll through these other ones fairly quickly here. We do have the DNN working groups. Um, this is something I think is still kind of in the, in the evolutionary phase. Um, but, uh, no, Will, I know you run the, the DNN training group. And, um, you know, the, you want to quickly just kind of to state what the purpose of these are? Uh, well, the working groups are different segments of the community that, that focus on a specific area of helping uh, like awareness or, or, you know, participation in those areas of the community, whether it's, you know, training, which is the information and events or something else. Um, so like with the DNN training working group, you know, DNN Con comes under that umbrella, uh, you know, uh, uh, redistributing information it, it comes under that umbrella. The announcement that we're going to make here very shortly that comes under that umbrella. Um, so if anybody wants to participate in any of these, all you have to do is, is you know just ping your you know the community member or ask a question in one of these areas, and and uh, one of us will help you uh, get involved. That's great. Yeah, the, the working groups are really intended to be private, small groups that we set up uh, for sharing information. Uh, before we're ready to share it publicly. So it might be documents or it might be just a discussion, uh, those sorts of things. Great way to get involved um, if, if you're more serious about a certain uh, area and there are different working groups and you're welcome to, to reach out and learn a little bit more about that. Um, you know, we also have DNN contests that uh, we just finished up the DNN 8 module challenge. So maybe you're a developer out there and uh, when these contests come along, hey, jump in, 
uh, get involved. Uh, not only will you learn something in the process, uh, you may be kind of uh, looking for a way to facilitate uh, developing and really kind of give you a focus. But, you know, uh, I will mention you can also earn some pretty nice cash with some of these things, too. So it's pretty exciting. <laughs> Then we have something very new here, you know, the DNN Documentation Center. Um, you know, maybe you're not a developer. Uh, maybe you are an administrator or a designer, and uh, you need some information very specific to your area. This is a great um, way to get to that information in a more concise way than you may find if you're looking into the forms and so forth. Um, so this is great. I I'll mention this, you know, from a being able to find information, but I'll also mention it too that um, the, the whole entire documentation center is on GitHub. So, you know, perhaps you're a technical writer or something like that and you, you know, you see some deficiencies or some missing areas of the documentation, you can contribute to that through GitHub. And um, I'm, I'm sure we'll put that link in there as well uh, in the show notes. Yes, we will. So let's talk a little bit about user groups here. Um, you know, there are uh, great ways to be involved in your local area with others that may be using uh, DNN. And, uh, you know, each group kind of has its own little life of its own, you know, and what, what the focus areas are. You know, us at the Southern Fried DNN, we try to uh, stay diverse in our uh, presentations and speakers that we bring on, and we try to switch up the format from time to time. Uh, you've probably heard Ryan Moore, you know, working through kind of an interview type format where uh, we don't really have a whole lot on the agenda other than just a bunch of questions that we want to ask. Uh, for instance, one time we had uh, Beatrice, uh, Beatrice from uh, Bind Tuning on, um, their site, you know, you're able to go out there and kind of configure a theme for DNN and uh, the way that you want it and then purchase it and download it right there. We had her on and Ryan went through a great interview process with her and then sometimes it's more of a formal presentation and sometimes it's more of a working kind of environment uh, where uh, we're doing something specific like uh, in Southern Fried DNN next month we're going to be, uh, Joe Brinkman is going to be with us. Uh, actually, it's not next month. When is that, Joe? I can't remember when we, <laughs> when we organized that, but uh, we are going to be working on the DNN Documentation Center as a user group, um, looking at how to do that, how to contribute to it, as well as have a working session where we're actually making updates to that and, uh, and contributing in that way. So there's a lot of ways that user groups and meetups can uh, can help with that. And these are just a few of the uh, DNN user groups that are out there. So if you do not have one in your local area, please consider uh, potentially starting one. Uh, you might be surprised at how many people in your area are using it when, when you get the word out. Then, of course, another way to be involved in the community is through, you may be a software company and, or a theme developer and you want to provide commercial offerings. A great way to do that is through the DNN store, uh, putting your extensions and your themes out there uh, for sale. And um, this, this is very much a viable part of the community. Um, you know, there's a pretty rich ecosystem built around this platform. And some, some people take the more open source kind of route and some people take the commercial route. And there are, there are benefits to both um, uh, ways of doing things. But uh, if you are a commercial developer, you may um, want to find uh, the DNN store as a, a nice tool, tool for your uh, tool, tool, belt or chest <laughs> there or toolbox and then you, you know you may have a uh, offering that is maybe a little bit bigger than just within the DNN space but it also like uh, I've, I've just picked out one here hotcakes commerce you know which has a uh, they meet a need in a broader community beyond just the DNN space but it is built on DNN so you know there's a lot of ways to be involved from a commercial offering standpoint. We have the Community Forge, so if you are developing uh, the uh, extensions and um, different providers or things like that for uh, the community in an open source fashion, you can list your offerings in the Community Forge there, and it's a great go-to place to find all things free in, the, uh, in this area. Great tool. 
you also can contribute if you're a, a developer or um, you know have um, that affinity to get really into the bowels of DNM platform. You can contribute that way um, through GitHub, and that is a wonderful thing to see it uh, come to GitHub. But there's also beyond DNM platform, there are community-run modules that um, you know kind of originated back from the core module days and or early .NET new uh, days that they have been separated out and these are community run teams essentially uh, but all of those have been moved to GitHub and are available there now so you may be able to find that if you'll do, do a sort of search for DNN community you'll find those repositories out there on GitHub. So big question here this is all great David but um, you know what have you done for me lately right <laughs> so, what was that I said oh snap yeah yeah so um, so what we have been working over the last uh, little while on something that we recognized as a need and a, a pretty big one in the community and um, I want to make sure that I, I am sensitive to the time here what, what what time do we have to you to have one to? minute oh my snap okay so we'll get right you, into you, it you can um, take a, a, a few more minutes I'll, I'll hold the other people up okay uh, well, as long as I can. well we'll get right to this then so many of you are familiar uh, with the make DNN site um, application that's been out there for quite quite a few years um, that is no longer available. Um, our uh, community member uh, a while back and uh, developed this, Mike Van Van Mueller, is that right? Will is that Mike Vander Mullen? Vander yes. Mullen, uh, yes. Former member of the, uh, the the user group in Orlando known as Odog. Okay, great. So so many of you have used his application to provide a quick and pretty painless way of installing a local DNN instance uh, without having to jump through all the hoops of worrying about permissions and you know all the various things that you do have to be aware of when you're doing it from scratch and by hand in a manual fashion so we would like to introduce to the DNN community NV QuickSight. This is an application that we, we like to say that it has all the good from the make DNN insight solution and none of the bad. So um, with that, without further ado, I'm going to go straight into a demo of this. Okay, so I have gone to our GitHub site and we will have this posted in the show notes, but you can also go to nvquicksite.com and find this and go to click the download link here and it will take you to uh, the GitHub site and you will download an MSI file. This is a Microsoft installer file. So I am going to go ahead and I'm going to click that and pull it over to the other screen. You'll see the install process here and I'm going to fly through this guys. Um, pretty basic and standard installation process. Hey David. Location? Yes. Uh, yeah when you get to the, the, the rest of that part uh, can you just make sure you zoom in on it because you have a very large resolution or very high. Oh yeah, thank you for, for mentioning that. So, is that a little bit better? Uh, no, it's black for me. I don't know about you, Joe. Well, okay, I may, I may be. Okay, is that a little bit better? Okay. That's better. It's still okay, let, high res, but that's fine. We'll deal with it. Okay, let me uh, let me do this. Okay, is that a little bit better? All right. Yeah. So, um, so I, I accidentally hit escape, and I realized when I'm in Zoom, I cannot do anything. Will, I don't know how to do that, so yeah, I'm going to have to do it like this. So, yeah. yeah, so I'm going to go through a repair just real quick, and when I get to the other part, I'll try to zoom in on a few things here and there. So I run the installer, and it ends in the close. At this point, it is installed in the system, so if I just do a basic search on NV QuickSight, there is my app showing up. I will start up the app at this point. Now, this app does run in elevated privileges, so you'll want to click yes. And here is the application. Oh, I'll zoom You can't see it? No, uh, we got a black screen. Oh, wow. Okay. Let me go back to Google Hangout and make sure that. Okay. I can see your screen again. Oh, you oh. can. Okay. Okay. Well, I was restarting. Now I see you. 
I think I'm going to have to, unfortunately, it's going to be uh, small for you guys because I think Zoom it is messing things up a little bit. But um, if you're able to see that, we'll run through a really quick install here. So what you'll see is a list here immediately of all the DNN platform and community versions all the way back to DNN 6.2.0. And you can select which one that you want. At this point, you may be thinking, oh, now it's going to send me to a site and download it. Nope, we're going to install it right here inside the app. You click this, and I'm going to re-download it because I would already downloaded it before. You'll see the progress bar. It's coming along, so it is downloading that package, and it is placing that into a folder in your application directory for this application, so you don't even have to worry about where that is but you will know where it is here shortly. So it downloads. Now we are ready um, for the location. Automatically gets populated with where that is. We click Next. We enter any type of site name um, that we want here. So you, know, you can call this DNN dev.me if you want to, if you're used to that type approach, or you can just uh, name it whatever you want to name. So I'm going to call it my site too, and then I can choose whether or not to where I want a site-specific application pool to be used or not, and I can choose whether or not I want to delete that site in IIS if it does already exist. So I'll choose a location, and I, I have a directory already set up here, so I'm just going to create a new fresh directory. I'm going to call it two. Select that. Now we're ready to go on to the next. So now we, we, you'll notice it already has my settings in here. Even though I just uninstalled and reinstalled the application, it does remember the last settings that I put in these fields. So that is my local DNN, I mean, uh, database, SQL Server database name. I will put in a database name that I want for this. I can choose Windows authentication or SQL Server authentication, whichever you prefer. Click Next, and now the magic starts happening. It is taking that install package. It is unzipping it to the appropriate location. It's setting up your file and folder permissions, and it is also setting up the IAS website, uh, setting up the, the custom app pool that you put in. Um, very similar to the way that MakeDN Insight. So we are now done, and everything happened the way it should, and we get a big visit site. I am going to click that. And, and there were some footer buttons there. So those footer buttons were there to help give you, uh, or get, to get you directly to some, some common help areas as well. Yeah, some of the areas that we've uh, spoken about so far, like the, uh, the forms, we also have a nice uh, documentation that's been written up that's on GitHub in the wiki area. And uh, thank you to Will Stroll for writing that. Did a fabulous job for that. Um, so please do check that out. But it will give you a direct link to that from the application. So now we have a local instance of DNN8 here. I'm just going to enter some basic information password, and if I wanted to change the email address, I could. I won't bore you guys with the details here because you already know how this works, but one thing that I will point out is that the database information is already here, so you, you do not have to re-enter that information, and this is a pretty big time saver, right, uh, when, when you're going through this. So I will just go ahead and click continue, and the normal DNN install process uh, goes through and we will have a working site. So we ran through that fairly quickly, but you can see in just a matter of a few minutes, and most of that is just waiting for DNN, right? <laughs> um, we have a completely functional local instance of DNN, and the application closed when we got to this point, so we don't have to worry about that. So uh, quite a bit of thought has been uh, put into the user experience here, and it definitely has room for improvement. So we do encourage you to uh, join us on GitHub, voice your opinions on it, and um, I want to be respective of Joe's time here. So um, I will uh, go ahead and switch back to this and wrap up the final uh, slide here. So let me uh, go through it. Um, so we were here. All right, so we went through the demo, and I will mention this. Um, we have one other link that you may 
not recognize when you're looking at the app here, there is a DNN DevSpark um, button here. And this is our second contribution here of, of significant magnitude. There's not a whole lot that I can share with you because the website is not ready quite yet. Um, but I will go ahead and reveal the logo for it. Um, it is called DevSpark. And what this is is kind of a, if you can think of it as a mini community uh, type it's sort of like user groups, but not quite. Um, probably the closest thing that you could think of that this might end up being is um, a hackathon type environment where we will have local meetups, um, hopefully all across the uh, world, um, that developers will have an environment to come together and to code at the same time, not on one specific thing, but maybe you're developing a new extension for DNN and you need some focused time to where you can develop, but also be able to pick other um, developers' brains, you know, on various things that you need to do. So this would be more of an informal type get together of let's sit down and let's code together in the same room and uh, really try to encourage each other. And at, at first, we'll be focused really on DNN, uh, but this does have the capability of growing even beyond DNN here. So DNN DevSpark, um, you will be able to get to it at devspark.com org or dnndevspark.com and um, look forward to uh, hearing your feedback on that and interest in that. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Definitely love the installer. It's something I've you know, been looking for for quite a long time. Um, I know a lot of people have done different bits on that, so that's definitely something that's welcome the community. Um, and uh, Hated to see uh, make DNN site uh, disappear there a couple of years ago, but glad to see a, a replacement for that. That's awesome. Cool. Thanks, David. Very, thank you very much for that. Um, like, like that's something that a lot of people have wanted to replace, but nobody was able to for you know any number of reasons. Um, so with that, uh, I think that brings us to the end of uh, this this month's hangout. Uh, Joe, and any uh, final closing words or thoughts? No, I just uh, really, you know, glad to talk with David here about community. I know it's something that uh, that all three of us have a passion about, and uh, uh, you know, it's the, the interesting thing about community is that nothing happens until uh, people start getting involved. So, big or small, uh, you know, whether it's running a conference or answering a question or even asking a question, um, then uh, you know, all of that goes towards creating a great community. Um, and so thanks, David, for coming and talking with us this month. Uh, it's always good to get other people's perspective on some of these things and always interesting to see how different people are uh, chipping in to help make DNN uh, community even better. It's a pleasure to be with you guys. Thanks for, for allowing the platform to do this. Yeah. Thanks, David. Thanks, Joe. And, and thank you, everybody, who's uh, watching now and who will watch later. Uh, we appreciate your viewership, and we'll see you at the next episode. Later. <laughs>